So, all right, well, let's uh, cruise on to 15. We're going to skip 15.3 for those watching. Uh, we are going to go to 15.4. We'll come back to 15.3 probably on Monday. Um, 15.4 is correlation. Correlation, um, you, the word correlation, correlation would be referring to things that correlate. And so you have, we have three different types of, well, I guess you could have an infinite amount of types of correlation, but uh, in the sense of, um, well, I'll give you the three that we refer to. There's really, yeah, three, three types of correlation. Correlation refers to when you have data sets, and we did this in geometry. Um, I'm trying to remember the example. It is like crickets chirping and the sounds they make per hour with a certain temperature or something, oh. maybe. And so you, you take data, whatever the data is, and you put the data onto a XY plane or whatever variables you're using. And so the data would end up you know, looking potentially something like this. If the data looks something like this, this would be a high positive correlation, okay? Because it looks like you could do, um, you could draw a line through that and it would kind of represent what's going on. Um, in this, the R value is close to one. Okay, now we'll talk about R value. But if the R value is close to one, it means you have a high positive correlation. Yeah, I guess you could kind of think of it as slope in some ways, but it doesn't mean slope. Um, because you could you'd say, oh yeah, slope of one, up one, right one, up one, right one. But you could have, you don't have to draw this, but your correlation could be like a really steep correlation where your slope is at one, um, but it would still be an R value close to one. Uh, but it is a positive one, so it does matter that it's going in a positive direction. So it does correlate to the slope that way. But again, what you could do is you could draw a line that would, and that was actually called the line of best fit. And we'll actually, I think we'll try to do the rough time. We'll talk about how to do that on the calculator to find that line of best fit. So with this then, um, if you were doing it longhand like we did in geometry, you wouldn't pick this point and this point and draw a line that doesn't fit, right? So you pick two points that would uh, correlate to that line drawn, or to all the data that would be the line of best fit. There's a way to punch in all that data into the calculator, hit enter, and it says, here's the best line. It takes all of the averages. We're gonna talk about that. We're not gonna do that where we do longhand averages of the x values and averages of the y values. But that's the equation, which, which it is. It takes all the averages of the x's, all the averages of the y's, and then picks an x, y value off of that um, to use. So, but that would be a high positive correlation. A high negative where the r value, if it's a high negative, what do you think the r value is close to? Yep. Close to negative one. Mm -hmm. And that data is going to look like something like this, okay? And you can draw a line and it would be going in a, a slope would be in a negative direction, you bet, okay? Now when I said infinite, it's because our third one is, I need to get rid of this marker. If you had dots like that, would you say that there's a line of best fit that could go through there? No, because if you draw, you know, you draw this line between this point and this point, well, it doesn't account for this way out here, this way out here. So this would be no correlation. And if it's no correlation, what do you think the R value is close to? Yeah, R value close to zero. Now, zero, the R value is actually, it's just simply referring to, um, and I'll show you the equation for it, but it refers to how well the data correlates to itself. Um, and there's an equation for it. 
which I should have maybe given to you at first. You're not going to need to memorize these equations at all. I'll give you these equations on the test. So when I said there's an infinite amount of like high and you know high negative, high positive, type, infinite amount of correlation. Well, there is because what if the data again you don't need to write this, but what if your data you know is a little bit more spread out but looked like it was kind of a positive. So it'd be a little less than high. Then you could have a little less than high, a little less than high. Because if our values are going to be between 1 and negative 1, there's an infinite amount of R's that you could have. You could have, you know, 0 0.79, 0 0.78, 0 0.7884, 0 so on. But the three, we're really, you're right, we're thinking high positive, high negative, or no correlation. What's the equation for this R value that we're talking about? The equation for the R value is, um, it's called the correlation coefficient. Uh, and you don't really need to know that. But m sub xy minus m, this is capital M, sub x times m sub y, all divided by sigma x and times sigma y. Now, you'll, like, I'd give that equation to you on the test. And then also you'll see, like, in the homework, we're going to give you what m sub xy is. We're going to give you what m sub x is, m sub y, sigma x, sigma y. We're going to give that to you. You're not going to have to find all those. Now, what do you think m sub x, y is? Is that one capitalized or not? Yeah, both. Sorry, all three are. That's a, but yeah, all three are capitalized. What would you guess m sub x, y stands for? Like the average mean. The mean of, uh-huh, mean of what? m stands for mean. What do you think x, y? If you got the coordinates of it, and then the, like the two numbers, it's like the mean between those two. Kind of? Oh, good guess. It's actually the mean of the product of all your x y's. So you would take every coordinate point. You take this x y and multiply it together, come up with a value. This this x y multiply it together, come up with a value. This one multiply. Then you take all those multiplications and you find the mean of it. Okay. M sub x. What do you think m sub x is? Yep, mean of all the x's, and then m sub y, mean of all the y's, and then you would multiply those two means together, divided by, what do you think sigma x is? Is it the standard deviation? The standard deviation, yeah. So it's the standard deviation of your x's times the standard deviation of your y's. So if you had 30 coordinates, this would take a long time to do. Right? Mm -hmm. You'd have to multiply all of them, find the average of that, find all the average of the x's, all the average of the y's, the standard deviation by doing the variance to get the standard deviation. So but that's how you find your r value. And that is a correlation coefficient. So it's averaging the x's and the y's and then figuring out how far apart they are from the average using the sigma stuff. So okay. Um, and there's also a way to find that on your calculator, but what is the r? You punch in all the values, hit enter, and it's like what's the r value? Okay, from this, um, so scatter, by the way, the, all the dots would be considered a scatter plot. Those are a scatter plot. Um, I said line of best fit, also known as a regression line. Okay, so if you hear the word regression line, linear regression, quadratic regression, because not always does your data fit in a line. It could fit in some sort of curve, if you like a quadratic curve or a cubic curve, or a natural log curve. So you can have those as well, but these drawn are a linear regression. So these are linear regressions and, or line of best fit. It could also be used, but the book uses linear regression. Okay, so uh, the regression line, okay, how would you find a regression line, a line of best fit? Well, there's two ways that we've, one way we did it in geometry, right? We just took two points that looked like they might work, and then you found the slope between those two points and plugged in the point slope form, whether you remember that or not. So what do you need to write the equation of a line? You need a slope and a y-intercept. You could use a y-intercept or any point, yeah. Y-intercept makes life real easy for us, but if you don't have that, you just need a slope and a point. 
So again, what we did is you take two points, find the slope, and then plug in the point slope form using either of those two points, and then find the equation of the line. Well, there's actually a very specific way you can do that rather than picking two random points. And what that is, is that you, um, you use the, to find it, the point you would use is m sub x comma m sub y, which actually makes sense. You find the average of the x's and the average of the y's. That's your point you would use. And again, you're not going to have to do this. Uh, I say that. Um, I don't think you will. I think they just give it to you. Like here's m sub x, here's m sub y, and then so you already have it. Uh, and then the slope that you would need as well. The slope is found by going r times. So you find r, your correlation coefficient, and sigma over sigma. Now, is it sigma y over sigma x or sigma x over sigma y? Which one would you guess? X over y. X over y or y over x. The fact that it's a slope would tell us something. Oh, y over x. Y over x because it's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus y2. Yeah, you bet. So sigma, so if you want to find the slope, you need to take the correlation coefficient, multiply it by the Standard deviation of y over the standard deviation of whoops x like that. Okay, um, let's go to page seven twenty seven. I'll do a quick. You don't. You can draw this chart if you want. Number two on seven twenty seven. You don't have to draw the chart. I'll just draw it. So for the video watchers, if you don't have your book or something, um, it's for the sales of single family homes for six consecutive months. So home sales, and then it's for the median price. What's the median price? $1.99. What, well, what does median mean? Oh, like the middle. Middle, right, and the data, and then number sold. Okay. So what they want you to do on this, they give you nine, so not, obviously the house didn't sell for $99. It's in what? Thousands. Thousands. Okay, so 95, <clears throat> 98, uh, 720. And then this is how many houses sold. 98, 97 is 730. And then 90, or 105 is 640. And then um, 108 is 650. So this um, is six, six data points. So what they want you to do, it says draw a scatter plot, describe the nature of the correlation. Um, when you describe the nature of the correlation, they're not actually, you, you could plug into this formula and find it by doing the, because you're given coordinate points, right? 99 comma 710, 95 comma 740. Um, but they're not actually looking for that. They're just looking for you to look at the dots you draw and then say, is it no correlation, positive or negative? So when we look at this, when we do a <clears throat> XY plane, what is our X? Is our X the dollars or the number sold? Probably dollars. Probably dollars, right? Usually, whichever one comes first in the data set. And then the number sold, okay. What would, uh, do we want to put like, okay, one, two. Uh, like do 10, 10 maybe? You can do 10s. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, like 80. Like 80? 90 maybe? 90, okay. So if we go 90 and you could do like that, yep, so start at 90. I, uh, what do you think, go, if we go in ones, we're gonna have to go out 18, so maybe go in, you tell me. Twos. Twos, okay, so 92, 94, 96, 98, 100, 102, 104, 106, 108, and then like that. And um, what do we want the number sold in? Mm -hmm. Everyone's 
she like intends starting at like seven or something? So you could go more room. Or? No, it's get to double more room. I mean, that's like six fifty or six. No, six forty. Yeah, you can start at the 640, and then you want to go 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 700, and then 10, 20, 30, 40, all that 740, like that. Okay, I think that works fine for us. So we go over 99, up 710, right? Seven ten, then over ninety five. So that's ninety four. So over ninety five, up seven forty. Over ninety eight. So up uh, seven twenty. A little bit closer like that, maybe. Uh, ninety seven is seven thirty. Ninety. Is 7.30. So somewhere like there. 105, we got to jump out to 45 is right there. Go to 6.40. And then 108 is 6.50. So you get a little bit of a random one popped up there. So that's the data we have. It's only six months, so it's not a ton of data. What does that look like? Positive, negative, or none? Negative. Negative. Um, you could maybe argue, well, it's high, moderate, although we only have high, positive, high, negative, or no. But you might argue, well, this one really throws it off. But in general, what do you say? It's a high negative correlation? Yeah. So it'd be a high negative correlation, R would probably be close to one, uh, negative one. So you'd say high negative correlation. High negative correlation. Make sense on those? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, let's go to number six. Number six states for us, in exercise two, suppose X represents the median price of a single family home and Y represents the number sold. So that's just what we did, right? So we're going to look at number six. So X is the median price, Y is the number sold. Um, Okay, then what does it want us to do? Um, find the value of correlation of the correlation coefficient. Find the value of the correlation coefficient for the ordered pairs and an equation with aggression y. Now, when they say find the value of the correlation coefficient, are they expecting you to do all the math using all the data points? No, because if you look at number six, what do they give you? Well, the, yeah, and, and x and y. They give you everything, right? Yeah. So for part A, it says find the correlation coefficient R equals, we're just gonna plug in what they give you. M sub XY is sixty-nine thousand eight ninety-three point three three minus uh, M sub X. Let me double check my numbers, make sure I'm doing it right, be appreciated, and then you'll have your calculator out. So these numbers are simply coming right from the book, right? That they give you. And they just give these numbers to you. I'm not doing some like quick mathematical calculations in my head. That would be impressive. <laughs> that would be phenomenal. <laughs> if I was cranking out some standard deviations in my head that quick. Or in my head, period. <laughs> Doesn't matter how quick. All right, so they just give you all the numbers and you just plug right into the formula and it's gonna tell us R. Wait, you guys, do based off of our graph, do we fully expect it to be negative? The R value. Mm -hmm. Yes, because it's a. Oh, yeah, it's the same one. Yep, same one. Um, 
Yeah, if they use the same numbers, which I think they did. Actually, I don't. I guess I don't know that. But I'm, it says in exercise two, so we're assuming they use the same numbers. We fully expect it to be negative, and my guess is we fully expect it to be close to negative one, because this is pretty good data here showing a decrease in the housing market. So should be fairly close to negative one. Negative zero point. I got uh so I have to take their patient again. I got negative nine point four eight and you got it blah blah times ten and then you have to do the Keep pointing in the wrong thing and I just turn over there. <laughs> 69,893. Oh, I found one of them. A little error? Yeah. Did you do 461 instead of 4.61? Yeah. yeah, that dot looks a little sketchy, but. Negative uh, 0.948. Okay, so negative 9.9484 is rounded. So then, remember, you should calculate it to its fullest extent. The book answer is going to actually say, hey, that's negative 0 0.95. That's fine. But when you're doing problems and as you progress in mathematics, or sciences, make sure you use the calculator to its fullest ability. Hold on to that value, negative 0.94, you know, 83, dot, dot, dot. Because then it says, find an equation of the regression line. Remember, to find the equation of the regression line, you need a point and you need a slope. So what we're going to do is, we're going to plug into point slope form, which is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Now, what do we use for y1, what do we use for x1? Well, we're going to use, remember the point we use, is m sub y, and how do we find our slope? It's r times sigma y over sigma x uh, times x minus m sub x. So that's our point, m sub x and m sub y, and then our slope is the r value. Now when I said hold on to this value, that's because I can take this 0.9483 dot 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 on the calculator and multiply it by sigma y over sigma x. So I'm going to take my answer and multiply it by sigma y, which is from the book, right? These are from the book, 38.91, right? over 4.61 is sigma y over sigma x. So I'm going to just find the, I'm just finding the slope. Why don't we go ahead and find the slope here. Um, what are you guys getting? I got 8.4. I got 8.04. Yep, and I rounded the 4 to a 5. Okay, so the book answer actually is they put a negative 8.02. So what they did is they used this rounded value and then came up with. Uh, this because that would make sense that they have a larger number if they use the larger number here. So you have to pay attention to that and say, well, I didn't use a rounded value, I'm slightly off, well, yours is a better answer. But you could go the route of going to the nearest hundredth and then you're, you're going to match theirs. Okay, so not a big deal. If, if like this was a test and you have this or this, I'm going to roll with either one. 
I wouldn't put, I guess you could get away with just negative eight, but to the hundredth is usually pretty good. Um, sometimes I say ten, but the hundredth is pretty good. So then now I just need to plug in whatever my m sub x is, my m sub y, so m sub x, 100.33, right? And then m sub y, y minus, uh, what was that one was? No, no, m sub, yeah, m sub y was 698.33. Like that, and then you distribute the negative 8.005 in, add the 698.3 in, and remind me, I'll show us how to do this one, like this specific problem on our calculators, the graphing calculators, like when uh, next week sometime we can do that. Can you think of anything you need to say to Lauren to make her cry? Uh, um, you're blonde? Uh, <laughs> you're blonde. That's the best we can come up with. <laughs> I told her it was not going to do well this year. So we're going to cry. <laughs> okay, so what did we get after you distribute this into here? And that's a positive, remember? A negative and a negative become a positive, and then you add this over. And it would make a lot of sense that it's going to be a high positive. And you're going to explain to me why it makes a lot of sense that it's a high positive. What did we come up with? Any decimals on there? Yeah, 0.4. Did you use this rounded value or the whole value from your calculator? Kind of curious. Nice. Okay. The book answer comes out to 1502.98. They're using the rounded values. Why would we fully. So now, great, you've done your algebra, you've done point slope form, you've plugged in some of the equations. Now you got it. Like the next step, really which we don't often do, but we should do a lot more of, is this. What does this even mean? Explain that to me. Explain the, explain the letters. Maybe start with the letters. What does X stand for? Is it oh, no, wait. I'll help you out. Easy dub. It's right there in the book. They tell you, actually. Oh. And I wrote it on the board. Price of the home. Okay, the median price of a single family home. Then what does Y stand for? The number, the number sold. sold. The number sold. So when you plug in a median price, it tells you how many were sold. So why does it make sense that we have a high positive? What again, uh, think about this graphically, what does this represent? Don't think home prices or anything, just think graphically, what does this represent? This equation. Oh, that's the y-intercept. The y-intercept, right? Mm -hmm. Come back over here to our graph. Look at our graph. Would it make sense that the y-intercept is way up here? Mm -hmm. You bet. That's why. Oh yeah, that would make a lot of sense. So now explain to me the slope. Like what does that mean? What does that number mean? Like the, like the average is where it's like no, it's not, not, that's not. It's not the average. average. Just yeah, what is this number? Negative. Just call it negative eight. What does negative eight mean for us? Like the average portion of the ratio. Mm, no, I don't think so. Is it the answer in our book? Uh, <laughs> no. Look at the graph. Think about what slope tells us on the graph. Just you have know, the following thing. Mm -hmm. So, how the, the price, how much the number sold for? Yeah, so negative 8. Remember, x is your. 
median, right? So every time you plug in uh, X, so X is standing for the median price of the home. So as the median price of the home goes up, your number of homes goes down. So for every one, because think of slope, it's not written this way, but negative eight, what we can call it negative, let's just call it negative eight for our purposes. Remember this is negative eight over one. So it's a, it's a you, you drop eight, run one. So you're dropping eight, what? Eight, <laughs> eight homes sold for every dollar, but it's not one dollar, it's, it's in thousand. thousand. So for every thousand dollar of increase, so eight less. you sell how many less homes? Eight, eight less homes. <laughs> so that's important is that we need to start understanding as you progress, is that when you see an equation, it's not just, okay, I've got an equation. Because that's all we did was plug into an equation. That was pretty, oh, I think it's pretty easy. They gave you this, you just plug, sh sh enter. But then we start understanding, what, what does this even mean? What are we doing? Oh yeah, for every, right, eight homes that we lost, we increased the price by $1,000. Or for every, maybe, better way to put it, is every $1,000 you increase the home price, what happens? That many less sold. What we're not, what we're actually seeing in Missoula is, if you will, the um, number of homes that the price is price is going down. Number of homes sold is going down. Usually what happens when the price goes down, number of homes sold goes up. Why are we seeing this trend? People are just don't want to move here anymore. <laughs> no, they want to move here. And they are still moving here for sure, but it's a lot less, There's not as much movement in the market. A couple of reasons. One is not many people are selling because um, they've bought right? And they want to stay in Missoula, so not many people selling. But also, you probably didn't pay attention to this unless your parents are talking about it, but the interest rates went way up. So if two years ago you could buy a home at a 2.8% interest rate, your mortgage would be, depends on the price of your home, but I'm going to have to pay $1,500 a month for my home. Same home, same price, two years later at 7% interest rate, your mortgage now is you have to pay $2,900 or $3,000 even. So now, I, what, two years ago, I only had to pay $1,500 per month to live in my home. Now I have to pay $3,000 a month to live in my home. I can't afford that, therefore I can't buy it. So all of a sudden, interest rates went way up, housing prices went down because people were trying to sell their house for this, but then they're like, I can't afford that. Interest rates are too high, so what do we need to do? We lower our housing price, interest rates stay here, we lower our housing price until somebody says, I was gonna pay 1,500 a month, I can't pay 3,000 a month, but I can do 2,200. Okay, now I'll buy. But the housing prices will have to keep dropping. Now, they're not dropping enough for most of us that live in Montana or like, or, you know, live here to like be able to go buy homes. They need to drop. Drastically. I was just looking at, I was like, oh, here's a house for $350,000. I'm like, oh, that's a good deal. And it was a trailer. Nothing wrong with living in a trailer. But a trailer, four, five years, six years ago, would have been like 100000 Yeah. If that. I'm like, so um, that's the, the nature of it. That's a lot of money for a trailer. No problem living in a trailer though. Hear me on camera. 